Okay, let's take a look now at what happens after we've made up we've made enough glycogen. As we have talked about in some of our earlier classes, we know that we have a limited capacity to store glycogen. And that's because glycogen is this highly branched molecule that is hydrophilic, so it can bind water, and that makes it really heavy. So we have a limited ability to store glycogen. Um, what happens when we abs have absorbed more monosaccharides than we can store as glycogen? Then, um, when we're in this fed state, then we will start to take those um, those monosaccharides that have been broken down into acetyl-CoA, and we're gonna start building them into fats through lipogenesis. So what's gonna happen here is we will have insulin is going to be stimulating, which so remember that insulin before was stimulating the, synth the synthesis of glycogen through glycogenesis. We've now repleted our glycogen stores, so now insulin is going to be stimulating the expression of enzymes that are involved in de novo lipogenesis in the liver. So that's what I'm showing you here. This green circle is representing the nucleus, and inside the nucleus, of course, we have our DNA. So insulin can initiate a signaling pathway that is going to increase the uh, gene expression of enzymes such as acetyl-CoA carboxylase, abbreviated as ACC, ACC is an enzyme that is required in order to take acetyl-CoA's and build them together to make fatty acids in the process of lipogenesis. So the take home message here is that when we consume excess carbs um, that can no longer be converted into glycogen because our glycogen stores are repleted, those excess carbs can be converted into fat, into triglycerides in the liver. And from there, those triglycerides in the liver, we have a limited ability to store triglycerides in the liver. In fact, the liver gets very unhealthy if you store too many triglycerides in them, that would be leading towards steatosis. Um, so for the most part, the, the triglycerides that are synthesized by the liver, they are then going to get exported from the liver um, through pathways that we will talk a lot about in our lipid section of the course. But overall, excess carbohydrates in the liver are going to be converted into fats through the process of lipogenesis. Okay, now let's take a little bit of a closer look at fructose again. So remember I told you that we absorb fructose, it gets trapped in the cell, and that fructose can then enter glycolysis after this heavily regulated phosphofructokinase step. So what happens here is that the fructose, it has a few different possible pathways. It can go through the rest of glycolysis. It can um, go through glycolysis to become, or from there, the acetyl-CoA can either enter the Krebs cycle and be used to generate ATP, or that acetyl-CoA at the end of the glycolysis can then go um, towards lipogenesis to form uh, uh, triglycerides, fatty acids. Um, or this, uh, the fructose can ultimately get turned into glucose through gluconeogenesis. So a few different possible pathways for fructose. Now, since fructose is entering after this phosphofructokinase step, which we know is heavily regulated based on the energy status of the cell, that means that there could be a greater potential for fructose to get converted all the way down to acetyl-CoA regardless of the energy status of the cell, and then this buildup of acetyl-CoA going towards lipogenesis. So this is what, um, oh, and just a, rhyme, a reminder here that um, when we have that glyceraldehyde from uh, fructose that it has a phosphate added to it to become glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate where it continues down through the rest of glycolysis. Now the reason I wanted to share all of this with you is because there is this hypothesis about fructose being more lipogenic um, because fructose is entering into that glycolysis state after the heavily regulated phosphofructokinase step and the thought is that it can it can drive the liver to produce more fat and ultimately accumulate fat in the liver and, and lead towards steatosis. So there's this theory that fructose is more lipogenic. Now, where does this come from? There have been studies primarily in animals that were showing chronically feeding high fructose is associated with hyperlipidemia, so higher levels of fats in the blood, as well as hepatic steatosis. So hepatic steatosis is the accumulation of fat in the liver. And this is what I'm showing you a picture of here. Um, and this can contribute to a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, um, which is really a whole spectrum of conditions that are initiated from the um, accumulation of lipid storage in the liver. 
So what is happening here? Um, within these animal studies, it has been shown that fructose can upregulate hepatic de novo lipogenesis. Um, it can also inhibit beta oxidation of fatty acids. So it means we're shifting towards building fatty acids, but not burning fatty acids. And additionally, um, high fructose diets can induce hepatic insulin resistance. Now, most of this data comes from animal feeding studies where they were feeding high amounts of fructose, which is a bit different than how we tend to consume fructose in our diets as free living humans. So what is the data from human studies regarding the lipogenic potential of fructose in the liver? So there have been some cross-sectional studies showing that an association between high sugar sweetened beverage intake, which has a lot of high fructose corn syrup in it, and fatty liver, whereas they did not find this association with diet soda. So maybe that is suggesting that a high fructose intake, which we are getting from these sugar sweetened beverages, could be lipogenic in the liver. However, there have been other studies such as this meta-analysis, which was um, looking at uh, many intervention studies that really, that, that show that there really didn't seem to be a strong impact of fructose, and they really couldn't tease apart the impact of just fructose versus excessive energy intake. So overall, from the, the larger body of human studies, there doesn't seem to be strong support for this idea that dietary fructose, the way humans consume it, is leading to uh, a, a lipogenic outcome in the liver. Um, there was another meta-analysis that, that was also performed that was looking at controlled feeding studies, and they found that isocaloric fructose feeding did not induce um, any, uh, NAFLD, a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, whereas they found that the hypercaloric fru fructose feeding studies did seem to increase intrahepatic uh, liver fat storage. So, Overall, from the human side of research, it doesn't seem like um, fructose has this huge lipogenic potential based on the way that humans consume fructose, which is frequently roughly equivalent to the amount of glucose we consume when we look at it from sucro from the perspective of sucrose, which we know is 50% glucose, 50% fructose, or from high fructose corn syrup, which has slightly more fructose in it than glucose, but not a huge difference. So it, the human studies seem to kind of complicate and not support the lipogenic fructose hypothesis.